birthdays this morning. We get a chance to do that, and I wanted to make sure we have an opportunity tonight. If anybody here had a birthday, we miss you this morning. Miss Betty, Miss Betty Dickerson. That's right. We missed her this morning. We'll, we'll get her next week. Anybody else have one we missed yet? Any birthdays? Anybody here? All right. Anybody? Anybody had an anniversary? Anybody at all? All right. All right, we have a trio of ladies going to sing, I guess, trio, quartet trio. Are they going to sing for us tonight? She's pretty pretty. Can you all see Janet? Son as well. 
uh, waiting on uh, Brittany's job to coincide and get here. And so uh, the big request, and they got a home in North Carolina that we need to save. I just uh, need to pray about that. They need to get out from under that, and uh, that way they can get into something. Uh, they've got a house. They, have, they do have a house. And it looks like everything's going to work out with that. So pray about them, about them getting transferred up, her, her job transferring, and that working out okay, and then him selling his home. He needs to sell that home. And so I'm not worried about it. The Lord, the Lord can tell If it's his will, it looks like the Lord's already in his will. He'll make a way where it's his will. Y'all with me on that? That's that, that preach right there. But, uh, he does make a way. Amen. I'm in the book of Joshua tonight. Joshua chapter 14 tonight. Joshua chapter 14. And uh, uh, I'm going to try to be as short and sweet and that I unloaded the wheelbarrow and the whole truckload on you this morning. I'll be as short and sweet as I can. I know some of y'all really believe that, but anyhow, <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Caleb, I was reading in my devotion this week. I ran across this, and it blessed me so much. I said, Lord, I can't let go of this. I'm in Joshua chapter 14, verse <coughs> number 6. Verse number 6. 14, 6 in the book of Joshua. Y'all got it there? Say amen. Amen. All right. 14.6, but Joshua, then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. Caleb, the son of Jephunneh of the Kenzanite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I, Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out of the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. So I'm going to stop right there because we're going to save a reading of, uh, down to verse number 15 and just kind of get them all here in just a little bit. So the Bible says that here's Caleb coming to Joshua. Joshua, who succeeded Moses, the man of God, as the Bible says right here. Joshua was a general. He was like a pattern in, uh, for the Lord's army there. Joshua was a great commanding leader for Israel. And uh, he did the fighting, remember, when, in the first battle, when Moses was holding up the, the rod of God. So Y'all remember all that? Aaron and her by their side. It was Joshua down there in the valley fighting. Amen. And so God trained Joshua under the leadership of the man of God, as I'm saying it more than one time, Moses there. Okay? And so Moses passes off the scene, we know that, and now Joshua has been followed up in the leadership of, 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 that God put him in, that God put placed him in here. So uh, we see uh, under the leadership of Joshua now, here they're dividing the land that, that they've conquered. God has blessed them and moved them as they've gone forward into the land of Canaan, the promised land, okay? Caleb now comes standing before Joshua, the leader. And Caleb comes to Joshua, and he says, Do you remember, Joshua, what the man of God, Moses, said to you and to me concerning this land, this property? And old Caleb has come now to claim what God has promised. Amen. And I want to talk to you a little bit about faith tonight. And uh, look at this in just a minute. Let's pray tonight. Father, thank you, Lord, for your spirit in this place tonight. Thank you, Lord, for giving and for being able to help another brother in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the giving in this church. Thank you for God's people that love you and that are faithful to you and want to give to you. Thank you for this church. Lord, that helps each other, loves on each other. Lord, Lord, help us to do more, even so more. Uh, Lord, uh, not all of us are fortunate in others, and so some of us need help. And so thankful that, Lord, that we can help others. Thank you for that. Lord, here we come tonight, a dear man of God, like Caleb. Lord, I pray you teach us the truths about faith and lead us and direct us as we come to these thoughts 
And we'll give you praise for what you teach us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. For short and for a short word in the Bible, there are such things called no faith. There are some that have no faith. There's others that have what we would call little faith. Are you with me? And then there are even more some that go past little faith, and some would even say they have some faith. Are you with me? And even in the Word of God, God looks at us tonight and sees that even some have even greater faith, or great faith. Amen? I want to tell you this, when Jesus comes back to the earth, He's looking for one thing. He said, shall I find faith? Shall I find faith on this earth when He comes back? So he's looking for somebody that's still faithful to it. Amen? The Bible says faith, it only takes faith as a grain. Have you ever thought about that? The grain of a mustard seed. God uses, in the Word of God, the smallest seed made, really, to man there, one of the smallest there is, and said, if you just have that kind, that grain of a that little of faith, he said, you can move mountains. Amen? God doesn't require much. He just wants you to have it. Amen. 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 In our story tonight, you know this great story. And I wanted you to look at this before we get a little thought here tonight. Turn back to chapter number 12 and look at verse number 7. They just didn't sashay in there and say, Woo, hallelujah, Canaan. It's ours. Amen. That's not the way they did it. Amen. You remember the story how God sent out the spies. Y'all remember the story? And it was Joshua and Caleb that came back with a good report. You know all of that stuff. Well, here's what happened. If they would have just listened to these two men of God, faith would have carried them and conquered a whole lot more and a whole lot faster if they would listened to them. You say, preacher, what happened? I'll tell you what it cost them 40 years in the wilderness. Are y'all with me? And so, here we go here. And they were de defeating, and we see here, this is the resume, basically, of Joshua. And here's what I'm trying to show you, because I want you to look at the thought here, as we read verse number 7, called, from verse 7 down to verse number 24, the, pre the predominant word is the, wor is the word one, O-N-E, all right? You say, preacher, wonder why God puts all this stuff in the Word of God. You reckon He has any thoughts of what He's trying to say? And why he try? I'm going to tell you, every word in this book has something to say to you. Amen. Because it's God ordained and pushed by the Holy Ghost. Say amen, amen right there. And so let's read a little bit, verse I mean, verse chapter 12, verse 7. These things, and these are the kings of the country which Joshua, the children of Israel, smoked on this side of Jordan, on the west. And from the El Gad, I can't pronounce all these, valley, in the valley of Lebanon, even unto the uh, Mount Halak, that goeth up to Seir, uh, which Joshua gave to the tribes of Israel for a possession according to their division. So, so they conquered the land, okay? They went in there and fought back, killed people. Are you with me? And they went in there and, and won. And God graciously, by his covenant to Moses, and by his covenant to Israel there, God blessed their game of victory. Amen? Amen? And what I wanted you to see in verse number 8 and all the way down here, in the mountains and in the valleys, over the plains and in the springs, verse 8, and in the wilderness and in the south country, the Hittites and Amorites, Canaanites, uh, the Perez and Rezite, I can't say all this, the Hittites and the Jebusites. I mean, all these people were... were as I said in my Carolina work, they were whooped. Amen. Uh -huh. They got whooped. Amen. Then he goes and identifies. First time, watch it. The king of Jericho, what does it say? One. one. The king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, one. Uh, the king of Jerusalem, what? One. The king of Hebron, one. The king of Jeremoth, one. The king of Lachish, one. Y'all get an idea? All the way down to verse number 24 here, it lists every king that they went through, and every king and every tribe, one, 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 one. They didn't whip all of them at one time. They beat them one, one. Are y'all getting that? Yes. One at a time. 
He said, preacher, what are you trying to say? I will say to you tonight, I believe God is showing you something about the pattern of faith here. Amen? Amen. Let me say this. God won everybody. Amen? Amen? And so these people, the children of Israel, had to walk with God, they had to believe God, and they had to trust God, and it looks like if they would have won one battle and God gave them victory, they could trust God for the next battle. One. Amen? And the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And it seems like the more battles that they won, they recognized that the power of God was on Israel and was leading them in a direction to a promised land, just like he told Moses, and now is working through the man of God, Joshua. Are you seeing that? What I'm trying to say to you is this. Just because you win one battle, be careful, one more is coming. Amen? Amen? And the same faith that God gave you, and the same faith that you put in God in that battle, that first battle, is the same faith you need for the one that's coming after that, and then the one after that, and then I don't get that, and the one after that, and another one's after that. Amen? I, 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 the Christian life, praise God, it's, it's, it's not this. It's this. Amen? And then sometimes it's this. Amen? But one after one, are y'all getting the thought after walking after walk? If you just have faith in God, you'll get the victory. Amen? Amen. And God did that in chapter 12. That's why they're claiming things in chapter 13 and 14. Are you with me? Here comes Caleb's turn in chapter 14 and verse number 6. And then we see here, verse 6 and 7. I want you to see some things about his faith. And number one, we see that faith started somewhere. Faith had to start somewhere. Y'all with me? I'm going to go short and quick. i got three more points after this one point, And I'm moving right along here. Amen? Faith had to start somewhere. You just don't just, you just, you know, just don't wobble in. you got to start somewhere. Caleb is giving us testimony here. Look at it here. Then verse 6. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal. Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the, uh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said to Moses, and to the man of God, to turn to me and thee, and came thou to Barnea. Well, praise God. He said, Forty years old was I, and Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to came thou to turn to me to his spy out of the land, and I brought him word again uh, as it was in my heart. So, he got to go spy. They went out as spies. Amen. They wanted to see the land. You know the story? They came back and said the grapes is as big as watermelons. Praise God. And said the grapes and the watermelons is as big as Volkswagen. Hallelujah. It's a land that flows with milk and honey. They couldn't believe their eyes. God had blessed that country. It was a land, are y'all getting it, that floweth with milk and honey. In other words, it was plush. It was wonderful. Their eyes saw it. They brought back some fruit. The, the valley of Escrow, the grapes from Escrow, they brought back the evidence. And they said, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. What a land that God has promised. There's one little problem. The Anakims were there. The Anakim, you say, preacher, who in the world that? And they had big, humongous, overgrown giants. The sons of Anakim were giants. They were humongous, large people. Are you with me? Guess what? Most Baptists do. Praise God. Let's take a vote. <laughs> All right? Twelve of them. What do y'all say? Ten of them jump ship. We can't do it. They're bigger than we are. They ain't no way, Jose. Dear God, they look like monsters. They just humongous. They're big. Two men, Joshua and Caleb. Two men said, I believe God. Two men said, let's go at once. Two men said, praise God, we can take them today. Amen. I love men like that. They went against all odds. They went against everything. And they gave word and said, praise God. I'm just paraphrasing here. We're ready to go fight. Right, let's go claim it now. Let's go get it now. Because of their unbelief. Are you with me? But here's old, look at verse number 11, verse number 8 here. He said, as he's talking to John, he said, Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people what? Melt. While two were standing for God, there's ten standing against it. And they're, 
They're yapping to all everybody else and everybody's hearing that and making the hearts melt. You wouldn't believe that would go on in the Baptist church today, would you? Hmm? You get somebody that will stand up by faith, Preaching, brother. stand strong in faith and go for God, there will always be ten melters around somewhere. Right. Yeah. Amen. Right. Be careful how you put a damper on faith. Amen. 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 You might be the one that dies in the wilderness while Caleb gets the blessing. Yeah. Right. Y'all ever did? Did you hear what I said? I just told you a lot right there. Don't stand for faith. Stand for faith. Amen. Caleb stood. Caleb took us. I mean, he started. He started there. He saw it. He believed God in it. And I don't know if it was just him and Joshua agreed together, but Caleb started. He stood. Amen. And everybody else is melting, but there's one that says, I'll stand for Jesus. I'll stand for God. Three times you'll see this section in chapter 14, and we're going to read it. We're going to run into it in a minute. That three times you'll see that he wholly, wholly follows the Lord. Amen. Amen. And that's what God's looking at. That's really what the definition of faith is all about. One that will wholly attain and hold on to God no matter what is melting or what everybody else is saying, what everybody else is believing. Somebody has got to stand. Somebody has got to start by faith. Amen? Amen. You'll never do anything unless you have faith in God. Amen? Faith is what God blesses. There's so many faith verses tonight. I can give you tonight that without faith it's impossible to please Him. Amen. Jesus said, had faith in God. When they were going across the, the water there, that storm was uh, started brewing. They thought they were going to die. Jesus is over there and asleep. And he, they woke Him up and said, Master, cherish thou not that we perish. And we're going to die out here. And Jesus said, Oh, ye of little faith. Amen. That's where we are tonight. Somebody's got to start with faith. Somebody's got to stand by faith. We see here not only that, but look here at verse, uh, verses uh, uh, 9 and 10 and 11. Look at verse 9. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord. Y'all see that? Amen. If you will start with faith, you'll stand by faith, and your children and grandchildren might get to enjoy something down the road. Amen. Moses just told, as he's talking to Joshua there, he said, Moses said, Surely the land around thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever. God will give you something in faith that will last forever. Your children and your grandchildren. I'm glad for my inheritance and what I have received from my mom and daddy that have stood for the stuff over 50 years serving the Lord. And I have inherited it now. And because of their faith, my faith is strong now. Not in my dad and mom, even though I believe it. I'm, my faith is settled in him. Amen. Amen. And what I have got and what I was raised under the word of God from my mom and dad. Now my children and my children, my three children now, are serving God. And now I've got a generation of young ones coming up, I have a grand young ones coming up underneath. Hey, 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 don't tell me that faith doesn't bless you. Amen. If you wholly, wholly, wholly follow the Lord. There is an H-O-L-Y holiness unto the Lord. And there's a W-H-O-L-L-Y holy. That doesn't mean part of you. That means every bit of you. Amen. All of Body, soul, and spirit. Amen. God help us tonight. We see here, we see not only that he started, but we see that he stood. But number three, what I'm trying to show you in verse number nine and ten here, in verse eleven, he was steadfast. Amen. Everybody else is melting around him, but he stood for it. Amen? Right, and amen. guess what? Verse 10 says, And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. Uh, Caleb says, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day four score and five years old. How about that now? He was forty when he went in. 
And now he's he stood for the Lord, and he's uh, you know he started with the Lord, and now forty five years later, half of them have dropped off the scene, and probably all of them believers died in the wilderness, and God has blessed old Caleb, and now he's still standing steadfast, uh, and he's claiming the promises of what God told him. Amen. Amen. That blesses my soul. Amen. That blesses. Me. Amen. We see here, verse eleven. He says. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so my strength now for war, both to go out and come in. He said, I'll go to war and fight for it again today, just like I did 45 years ago. I'm just as willing to go by, because he knew he had the Lord on the side. Amen. He knew that he wholly followed the Lord and he was going to stick with God. And boy, I tell you, what's, a, what's this expression? You say, I'll stand for Jesus and let the world go by. I love that song. I used to sing it back a long time ago. But praise God, that's what Caleb is saying right here. But you're not going to get anywhere with this flippant faith. Right. On one minute off the next. Amen. In one minute out the next. Weak in faith and no faith and now have great faith. What is that? Here's a man that wholly followed the Lord and with the holiness of his whole self followed the Lord. His faith stayed steadfast in the Lord. Forty-five years later, he's standing and he's saying, I'm, I'm ready to claim that which God has given me. I tell you, that, that kind of faith will get blessed. Amen. And so we see here he started, we see he stood, we see he was steadfast. I mean, there's a little verse that tells us that, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, be ye therefore steadfast. Amen? Amen. Unmovable. Is that not right? Mm -hmm. Always what? Always, always abounding what? In the work of the Lord. Amen? Uh, Caleb never quit because he didn't get it by faith when he was 40 years of age. Because everybody else didn't have any faith. You see what I'm saying? And their faith and no faith dragged everybody else down. And he didn't quit on God 45 years later. He was steadfast. Get the word now. Unmovable. Right. There's a lot of movable parts in the Baptist church today. Especially faith. You know why we're not seeing anybody saved? We're not believing God anymore. Right. Hello. Right. Amen. Amen. If we knew how to believe God, believe in God, we'll claim the horns of the altar. That's praying. Praying is believing. Faith believing. Amen. You shall ask. Well, ask and what? Believe. And you shall receive, the Bible says. Amen. And so we, we, we've, got, we've got to have strong faith in this believing. That, and this man of God blesses me in the fact that he was steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Faithful to God. Faithful holy to God. If it was spoken of in our day, he came to church. Hello? Sunday morning. Sunday night. Wednesday night. I know y'all get tired of hearing me preach that, but guess what? I ain't even started preaching on the chair. Hallelujah. I hope you get tired of it. Maybe it'll get in that head and juggle a few whatever's in there and you come to church. <laughs> Hello? You say, preacher, why are we having all the problems? Why are we having all the trouble? Why are we having pain to God to do something? Do you find? Amen? Amen. Trying to help you. I love you. I love you. And I tell you tonight, I, I, I've faced it several times. I, my wife and I have almost ate a whole bottle of Ivy Brokers in the last. She's eaten as many as I've eaten now. Amen. <laughs> her pain and her foot. And I said, what are you doing? I said, take, take it out. I said, well, give me some. Hallelujah. I quit taking everything. I just quit everything. I, don't know. I used to take aspirin and everything. I just quit taking everything. I said, I hurt before I took it. I hurt after I take it. I said, what in the world? I, I don't quit taking that stuff. Amen. <laughs> well, I did. Now I'm not that crazy now. Hallelujah. Where was I?
going to have to take some of us to the whipping chair. Teach us a little bit about faith. Right. What he's trying to do is help that faith and get hope. Yeah. Step back. Yeah. Hope. Your faith might not be like mine. My faith might not be like yours. I'm going to tell you what God requires. He requires faith. Amen. 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 Let's read on here. Strong. Well, i got four minutes. Read three verses. First point. Now, therefore, now. I like that word. Look at verse 12. Now. Now. Now, therefore, give me what? This mountain. Amen. Give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake of in that day. For thou heardest in that day, here it is, how that the Anakims were there. Y'all see that? That's in giants. And that the cities were great and fenced if, if so fenced. I mean, they, they had a great city, a fenced city. They had high walls, but they could build high walls because the people were giants. These people were eight, nine, ten feet tall. Are y'all with me? So they could build high fences because the people could stood and look over them. Amen. And you had to get a hold of them. And the cities were great. They were giants. And, the, and, 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 and Caleb said, If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Amen. Caleb said, Praise God, bring it on. Hallelujah. Fences are no fences, walls are no giants. I don't care if they're eight, nine, or ten feet tall. If the Lord's with me, He tells me to go, then we can take this thing on, and by faith, we can whip the daylights out of it. Amen. That's what faith will do. Faith will give you boldness to knock down walls, faith will give you boldness to knock down high fences. They can give you boldness to look the devil in the eye, however how big and how tall he is, and overcome him. Not you. You can't do anything. But the strength of the Lord, the power of God can take care of everything. That strong faith in God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I like that. So we see here, he's, he's just claiming his blessing. He said, give me the mountain. I want that mountain. Uh, like Robert Hyde used to sing several hundred years ago. I want that mountain. Amen. Amen. Give me that mountain there. Well, what's he doing there? He said, I believed it. I, I claimed it. God said I could have it. And here I am still standing. I want that mountain. Praise God. He says, some things you claim by faith. Amen. 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 And Joshua, look at verse 13. Joshua blessed him. Hallelujah. And gave Caleb. Hey, buddy, Caleb, son of your book. Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jehovah, the Kenizzite, and this day because, because that he what? Holy followed the Lord God of Israel. The name of Hebron before was Kerjah Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. How about that? What happened, folks? What happened? What I see here in Caleb, number one, he started with faith. Number two, he stood when nobody else stood. Number three, he was steadfast 45 years later. Amen. Right. And now he's strong in the Lord. Amen. The very day. And God bless him. Amen. God bless him. Amen. I have one little sentence, and this is the whole message. Here's the sentence. How far will your faith take you? Amen. That's the message tonight. How far will your faith take you? Amen. You got that much faith? Well, how far do you think you're going to get? You have that much faith? Probably get a little bit further. If you got that much faith. Amen. <coughs> Look how this man stood, started, and was steadfast, unmovable. Holy, holy, holy three times in his passion. Following the Lord. And he comes at the end. And, and Joshua, that dear man of God, that went with him, bless him. Bless him. He got what was his. Amen. Amen. I'm just trying to tell you tonight, if we want a church that God's going to bless, it's going to have to be a people that have faith in the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Sometimes people don't understand preachers. Preachers just believe in God. 
I hope I don't step out there too far. I scare the devil out of some of you. Amen. Sometimes you have to step out there in order to move some of you to have none. Are you with me? And God does that. And I'm prayerfully asking you to start believing God. Amen. How do you do that? Well, it's holy. It's head, it's heart, it's all of you. Amen. Somebody's got to believe God. You believe God? Amen. How many of you can say God blessed me because I've been faithful? Amen. Some of you are helping me on your years. You know why? You've been holy far. Amen. Amen. How old is your dad? 86 years of age. That man raised eight young, four girls, four boys. And I'm telling you, he's just like that old battery, what's that bunny, just keeps on going, keeps on going. I just see him. I mean, he's been down. He's had health issues. Her mama has fallen many times. Those folks have just been so blessed. And I believe God has blessed them because that man has been steadfast and followed the Lord with all his heart. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you this. Right now, some of you young ones, if you'll determine now to stay with Jesus, Amen. your latter days will be blessed. Amen. 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 I'm not old. I'm not old as Miss Cleveland. Don't tell her I said that. Amen. <laughs> Please don't tell her I said that. I'm definitely not as old as Richard. So you tell him I said that. But anyway. But I'm coming. I'm coming on the more I grow, the longer I serve my Lord, the more I realize how faith means so much in my life. Amen. 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 God helped me. He helped me when I started. That's where he saved me. Amen. Right. Took faith to get in his faith. Amen. Amen. The faith that he gave me. Praise God. Well, I've stood down through the years, stepped out by faith. Many times in my own ministry, I had to get out of the boat. Because God's challenging. You know God will try your faith. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. He wants to see how many will get out of the boat. How many will stay in the boat. Amen. Praise God I've gotten out of the boat a few times. The Lord taught me. So I can say through experience and trials. Maybe not to understand Brother Carter. Some of you other folks have been living long for Jesus. Long than I have. But God's blessed you. Amen. And he's blessed me. And now I'm in the middle of life, middle life, middle life crisis, if I can say it that way. I'm in the middle here somewhere, wherever that age is. Y'all figure it all out. Tell me later, amen. But I'm in the middle here. But the longer I serve him, amen. the sweeter he grows. Amen. And the more that I love him, the more love he bestows. Because I'm finding out that sticking with Jesus is a whole lot better. And loving him and watching him and living with him and realizing that God will bless faith. Amen. He'll bless it. Amen. I just wonder what the blessing is going to be at the end because I'm enjoying the trip now. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's stick with Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give us a song tonight. Brother Kenny, let's all. How many of you like to testify real quick while they get the song? Say, preacher, I'd like to say something. Go ahead, Brother Kenny. God bless you. Three weeks ago, I got through from this church and testified that God answered a prayer of mine that I had been working on for years. Hey. Three weeks later, He is still blessing me, and I'm going to keep praising Him for it. Hey. Hey, amen. It's right. funny that you should preach this, because I've got one verse in the Bible that I live my life by. Yep. Yeah. Hebrews 11 and 1. Hey, amen. You can't live by faith. You're right. Hey. That's right. Amen. Amen. You just reminded me of a verse that I was going to share. I didn't even listen to this. Proverbs 28 20. A faithful man, a faithful man, that's 11 1, too. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Amen. Proverbs 28 20. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Hebrews 11 talks about these, all those that he mentioned, these all died in faith. They fought battle, but they died in faith. Amen. Faith is, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You might not see it. You'll 
holy, give it to the Lord. There's a blessing on down the road. Amen. I'm going to tell you, it's been a blessing to serve. God says, can you imagine Caleb 45 years later? Joshua said, uh, there's your mountain. Son, praise God, I went running up that mountain, went running around the mountain. You see what I'm saying? Because you're holy father God. Amen. That I'll challenge you tonight, stick with Jesus. Stay with him. Follow him. I don't care what you're going through tonight. Follow him. Follow him. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Who else? Anybody? Amen, Brother Steve. God bless you, buddy. You know, three years ago, I was, I was in a deep battle. Yes, sir. I didn't know which way to turn or what to do. And I ran into Jesus. Amen, brother. Praise God. I've been in that valley, deep in that valley, yeah. underneath the rocks. Yes. I'm sort of on top of a mountain right now. Lord, you're really blessed to be. Amen. Just praise Him. Hey. I love Him so. He was there with me then. I know He's here with me now. Yes, sir. Amen. And I know there's valleys to come. Right. But whatever you do, trust Him. Amen. That's what I said this morning. Just trust the Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. I like that, don't you? Amen. Stick with him. It'll pay better. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Wayne. Brother Dave, I, mean, I was thinking about old, old Paul. Yep. Uh, he then told his, uh, his followers, he said, I'm bound, I'm bound in the Spirit. He said, now, and now, behold, I'm bound in the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. He knew that that was going to be a afflictions and things. Yeah. But he was going anyway because he was bound in his spirit to go. <laughs> and they, they had tried to talk him out of going. But he said, no, behold, I told you this, I'm going. And then I'm going to Rome, you know. Yeah. He knew what he knew he was going to be killed. Uh, but i tell you one thing, he was a preacher, and he stuck by his word, he preached God's word to yeah. him. But he was determined to follow Jesus hey. wherever God sent him. Now, I think God more. Hey. There's a verse or two. I think it's your favorite verse. Acts 20, 28 says the verse. Talking about Paul's joy. Right after that, the verse when he said, I'm man in the spirit, he talked about joy and the grace of God to preach the gospel. Yeah, the Lord. It was the joy of preaching the gospel. Amen. What a Anybody else? Praise God. I'm glad I'm here tonight. Amen. Today I saw a former employer of mine, and he wanted to know why I was still teaching. I've had five strokes, and I've been told three times that I would never teach again. And I got to tell him, God is so good, I will be here tomorrow teaching hey. our children. Amen. God is good. Hey. Amen. That's a blessing. That's a valley. One stroke would be enough valley. Right. Five of them would, would yeah. definitely be it. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. Just keep going forward. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Keep going forward. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Who else? We're good. I'm good. I'm, I'm happy. Go ahead, brother. Pastor, I want to thank God tonight that no matter what you go through, you're like a little child sometimes taking his first steps. He falls and he gets back up and keeps on going. He falls and gets back up and keeps on going. I thank God tonight that he don't give up on us. That he takes us by the hand and leads us every step of the way. No matter what you face, I don't care what you face. If you look to him by faith, he'll lead you. And he'll keep you just as saved as the day you were born. That's wonderful, isn't it? The reward didn't come to Caleb overnight, 45 years later, so he got the reward. Y'all get that? If you live by faith, you might not get the reward tomorrow, but there will be a greater day for God's people. There will be a reward. Amen. 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 Praise God. Who else? Yes, Brother Tom. I just want to thank the Lord for a grandmother. Yes, sir. Amen, brother. I'm a deaf door. Oh, 
devil will try to trip you up, throw curves at you, right. swords at you, and everything like that. And what you, he tried to detour your faith because he knows the blessings coming. <laughs> Miss June, go ahead. I rely on the Bible verse. <laughs> Philippians 4, verse 2. I can do all things through one who strengthens me. Amen. You can't do all things through him. Now I got several of them. The whole Bible is my favorite verse. Amen. Yes. Uh, Lord, Lord really important in my life the last few weeks. I share a lot of this with you, but uh, share everybody else. Literally, the Lord had put me on my back, literally, uh, to really teach me a lesson and show me some things of faith to, to, to take the next step of what God called me to do and things called me to do. And, and, uh, and you know, I appreciate things like that. And uh, uh, recently, I've, I've resigned from all those things. I told the preacher about this, he knows all about it, but that's what the Lord did. He taught me through literally putting, my, putting me on my back uh, and showing me that, you know, I was just doing so much that I was missing opportunities here. And, uh, the Lord was giving me an opportunity to get back to the daycare and work with the kids and things like that. Lord yeah. opening doors, more doors as a result of another one that closed. Yeah. Yeah. That, was a, that was a stretch of faith for me yeah. um, just, to, just to do that. And the Lord had to do that because uh, I'm still getting over that, but through that time and physical, you know, the Lord's shown me a lot of that and test my faith through that. Hey. So it's a good Praise God. Amen. 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 Well, amen. It's been good tonight, isn't it? Amen. I appreciate it. Let's stand. Let's sing one, one verse or something good. 539. 539. Now let's lift it up to the Lord, whatever it is. Let's go out of here thanking Him and praising Him for helping us through faith. Amen. amen. All right. Come on.